Hi guys, Fitz here from Knock Once VS, and I'm about to bring you a video on how we go about producing an episode of Knock Once VS. Before I get into that though, I just wanted to say a couple of things. I'm not quite used to using our video editing software yet, and our screen capture software, so I made a few mistakes. First off, for some reason, it didn't capture the entire screen, but it does seem to have captured enough that it still makes sense. So apologies that there is a black border on the top and side of the screen. I also intended to separate my commentary from the computer audio, and I didn't. So I'm afraid that the audio is not going to be perfect. But again, I think there's enough there that you'll get the gist of it, and I hope that you will forgive me and enjoy this video, and I promise that going forward I will pay extra attention to these things and make sure they come out much better. Anyway, back to old me. Hi, this is Fitz from Knock Once VS, and welcome to a short video on how we go about mixing an episode. For the purposes of this example, we'll be using a recording for the Leicester Guildhall Paranormal Postcard, and I chose this as, whilst it'll give you a good idea of what we need to do to produce an episode, it's short at about 15 minutes long, and only has a single track. Most of our episodes run for about an hour and have multiple tracks, so there's a lot of repetition. I may do a further video later showing some of the additional work that goes into working with multiple tracks. If you're really interested, I'd recommend listening to this on a good pair of quality headphones, as some of the adjustments we'll be making may not be apparent on computer speakers or cheap headphones. So, let's get started by moving over to our Digital Audio Workstation, or DAW, or DAW if you prefer. Uh, we use a program called Cakewalk Sonar. There's no particular reason we chose this software, other than the fact that we received a version of it when we purchased our first audio interface, and we followed the upgrade path until we reached the latest version. Most DAWs are very similar, so if you want to do something like this yourself, your own DAW should have very similar features. As you can see, I've already loaded the track we want to work with into Sonar, and it's a single mono track of Lil. Beneath this is the console, uh, which is where the track faders are located. Obviously, there's only one on this instance, uh, as well as the buses. For this example, we don't require any buses other than the master bus, so I'll go ahead and delete them. I won't go into details here, but buses are where the individual tracks are routed to, with the master bus being the sum of all of the buses. In this case, we're just routing Lil's track direct to the master bus. So, let's get cracking and have a listen to what we're working with. I'm Lil from Knock Once For Yes, and this is a paranormal postcard from Leicester. I love to start an adventure with a train journey, and luckily for me, Leicester is only a few stops away on my local main line. OK, so we'll pause it there. Uh, we can hear, first of all, that it's a little bit quiet, and there are some unwanted noises, such as you can hear the computer fans in the background, there's breaths and lip smacks, and this will all detract from the content when you're listening to the episode. So first of all, we need to boost the volume to a good working level, and what we're going to do here is normalise the track. This will boost the volume of the entire track by a fixed amount. There are two types of normalisation, peak and RMS, simplest terms, RMS takes an average volume of the track and peak takes the loudest part of the track and this bass level is boosted until it's at the desired volume. Our software uses peak so let's apply normalization to the track. As you can see I'm not boosting 100% um, at 100% it should be as loud as possible without clipping. Clipping being the unwanted noise that comes from any signal over 100% being cut off. 
we want a bit of headroom to allow us to use any effects we might need or processing. So we're going to go with a peak of minus 3 dB. We can always boost the volume again later in the mix in various ways if necessary. So we'll go ahead and apply that. Okay, so we can see now that it's dramatically increased the size of the waveform. Uh, we'll have a quick listen to that. I'm Lil from Knock Once for Yes, and this is a paranormal postcard from Leicester. Okay, so immediately we can hear the tracks much louder, uh, but whilst it's increased the volume of Lil, it's also boosted all the stuff we don't want to hear as well. Uh, this is where we want to start using some audio repair software. So uh, we can load that up in a second. It's called Isotope RX. And uh, we should normally be able to move this through what's called process effect and load it up here. But for some reason on the version I have, either, whether it's the software or the hardware I have, it won't load the full audio track. So we're going to load that up separately. Okay, so here is our waveform in RX, and we can see with the normalization it's nice and large. So before we start any work, let's just have another quick listen to that. I'm Lil from Knock Once for Yes, and this is a paranormal postcard from Leicester. Crikey, those computer fans sound like a helicopter, don't they? Now, there is a very, very clever tool. Uh, that RX comes with, which is called the Voice Denoise. So we'll have a quick play with that, and what we want to do is audio denoising, and we'll preview that to check the difference. I'm Lil from Knock Once for Yes, and this is a paranormal postcard from Leicester. I love to start an adventure with a train journey, and luckily for me, Leicester is only a few stops away on my local main line, so I was able to enjoy comfortable, fairly stress-free travel. Okay, we'll just stop it there. Now, I take it you could tell the difference as I was uplifting the threshold and reduction sliders there. Uh, it was quite noisy, this was before we had our PC upgrade, so... It took a lot of processing to do that, but you can tell how incredibly useful this tool was for us, and obviously still is. Now, this program itself, RX, is pretty expensive. Um, we followed an upgrade path, so it's been a little bit cheaper. There is, however, a program, a cut-down version of this called RX Elements, and that includes this voice denoise plugin. So I cannot recommend this enough. I think it's around about 50 or $60 or pounds. It, you know, it's, a, it's an investment, but it's certainly well worth it. You've literally just heard the difference there. So what we'll do is process that and that will apply it to the whole track. Okay, so that's done. Let's have a listen to that. I'm Lil from Knock Once for Yes, and this is a paranormal postcard from Leicester. Wow, what a difference. Now you'll note that it's taken out a lot of the background noise, and a lot of the reason we have such an issue with background noise is because we came from a music recording background. So we have studio condenser microphones which have a wide pickup pattern. This basically means that instead of just picking up the person talking, directly in front of the microphone it has a very wide well pickup basically so it will pick up all the sounds in the room outside computer fans traffic we've got a terrible room for acoustics and it picks up all the reverb and reflections from that and this tool is just invaluable in removing that sound so next let's have a look at the mouth and lip smack sounds uh, to try and reduce the sort of room sound and issues we have with that we have to close mic which basically means speaking very close to the microphone and this really does increase 
the frequency of issues you have with lip smacks and mouth noises. Luckily, we have a tool for that. Mouth D-click. So let's have a look and we want to try first transparent removal. And we'll just preview that. I'm Lil from Knock Once for Yes, and this. So we still had a few things getting through there, so let's try eliminate. I'm Lil from Knock Once for Yes, and this is a paranormal postcard from Leicester. I love to start an adventure with a train journey, and luckily for me, Leicester is only a few stops away on my local main line so I was able to enjoy comfortable, fairly stress-free travel. Not bad, there's still a few left, but they tend to be in the silences between speaking, so we've got another way of dealing with those later. So what we'll do is we will process that. Okay, so that's that done. We've got one more tool that we want to use, and this is the de -esser. And this is basically just to remove the harsh sibilants from sort of S sounds, which tend to come out much stronger with microphones. So we're gonna go with a simple voiceover setting. We will just have a quick preview. I'm Lil from Knock Once for Yes. And this is a paranormal postcard from Leicester. Okay, if you overdo DSing, it makes you sound a bit lispy. And this just cuts off by a few dB uh, some of the harsher frequencies. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just apply that. And that's it done. Okay, so we've raised the level. We've removed background noise, we've got rid of clicks and pops, and we've run a de -esser. Now, what else do we need to do? So, I've listened to the whole track already. I know there are some gaps that need editing out, as well as some breaths. Uh, you've got the clicks at the start, and a few other things in some silences that we need to edit out. Uh, I mentioned that we had and breaths and the eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that there is a breath control plugin for isotope and i'm not going to use it two reasons sorry isotope but i don't find it very effective on dialogue it tends to miss the breaths and pick up quiet dialogue instead two even when it does work it tends to sound unnatural uh, either through leaving a pause in the audio or muting some of the preceding or following words. So we've got three options with breaths. We can either hard edit them out as cuts, we can leave them in as they are, or we can reduce the volume so that they're less distracting. This is very much a case-by-case -case basis and we'll make that decision as we go. We also need to edit out the gaps in the speech which are left from cuts from recording such as after making a mistake, redoing a part or simply pausing to take a breath or look something up and we'll edit these as we go as well. So what we'll do now is we will just save this and I shall come back to you once we're back in Sonar with it reloaded. Okay, so let's just check that everything is as we expect. I'm Lil from Knock Once for Yes, and this is a paranormal postcard from Leicester. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just run through the entire track, and basically I'm listening for errors, I'm listening for things that we haven't been able to pick up in the repair software, and I'm going to edit those out. It's quite a long process, so I'm going to speed it up for you.
Okay, so here we are at the end of the track. What we're going to do now is select all of those cuts. We're going to bounce it to a clip, which basically takes all those cuts and fades we've made, turns it all back into one track that is much, much easier to work with. Okay, so we're back. It's got one track, and I can tell that any of you that have a slight inkling about anything audio will be shouting at me, but Fitz, why on earth did you not use a gate? Now, the problem with close miking is the breaths and various other sounds quite often are loud enough to get through a gate. So effectively what I've done in that pass through is go through and edit out all the loud sounds and you're correct, we are going to use a gate to clean up the rest. So here we go. Start from the start, that would probably help. I'm Lil from Knock Once For Yes, and this is a paranormal postcard from Leicester. I love to start an adventure with a train journey, and luckily for me, Leicester is only a few stops away on my local main line, so I was able to enjoy comfortable, fairly stress-free travel. Quite aside from my rather romantic affections for railway journeys, however, I had a good reason to begin my trip at Leicester Station, as it reputedly has a ghost of its own. A phantom postman nicknamed Henry has been sighted here. No one seems to know why he favours the rail line as his haunting ground, but he seems to be a good-natured spirit, more often sensed than witnessed. The heart of Leicester is only a short walk from the... OK, we'll pause it there. Now, basically all this does is it cuts the audio until it reaches this volume and that keeps out all the sort of minor noise that's been left in and once it's past this point it stays open until the volume drops below this because you tend to find with speech and singing and various other things start off with a strong breath and if it cut off immediately after it dipped below this you'd find that you'd be losing a lot of the speech. So that's why we've got a sort of a separate cut-off volume. Now that has solved the vast majority of our audio problems and there's only a couple of steps left now. Now, we've boosted the audio, we've removed things we don't want, what is left? There's only a couple of steps left in this example, uh, compression or alternative and EQ. Now, I said or alternative in relation to compression, as in this case, I have another approach. In simple terms, compression lowers the volume of the loudest audio and boosts the quieter parts to make it more homogeneous. Almost any compressor you use will add its own flavour to the sound, and some add such a pleasant flavour that they are very sought after. They also have a quality that seems to make multiple tracks seem more of a whole when combined than a simple summation of their parts. When overdone though, the sound is very squashed and becomes unpleasant. The amount of compression and combination of different compressors is more of an art than a science, but a general rule is that you can always add more compression later, but you can't remove it once it's done. What we're going to do instead is ride the fader. Or at least we're going to let a plugin do that for us. But first, we need to do some EQ. Equalisation, or EQ, balances the frequencies in the audio. 
It's perhaps less important in dialogue than music, but it still has its uses. In simplest terms, EQ is like a separate volume control for the different frequencies, so you can boost or cut certain frequencies or ranges of frequencies, and we want to do this before compression as it can affect the volume of the clip and hence what is compressed. Some of the changes we make may seem practically inaudible, and much of them are to taste rather than formula, but I'll give you some exaggerated examples so you can get an idea. So if we just go to our EQ, this, this is the EQ that's included with Sonar sure that's on and if we now go and station turn on the audio once across the busy road i soon came to the new walk a pedestrian avenue running straight into the city center flanked with historic buildings behind sentinel bare winter trees and with freezing fog and still hanging seeing here that i'm cutting air. off all the base it and it makes it very thin Sounds almost like an old timey radio. Navigating the bustling town, I was concerned. So what we're going to do is going we're just going to roll this back on until we get to but a point where it sounds natural. Was like stumbling into a hidden pocket of history, tucked away right in the middle of a busy city centre. It was slightly surprising to find the very well preserved 14th century guild. Okay, so there we have basically cut off the low part of the audio and it takes away a lot of the sort of boominess uh, but it still leaves the Lil's vocal sounding quite clean uh, but it's lost the rumble that can be quite distracting so what we're going to do now is we're going to search for some resonant frequencies that are quite unpleasant to the ear the way we're going to do this is to make the band that we're looking at very very tight and we're going to boost it all the way and then we're going to sweep and we're going to look for frequencies. Um, if you've got your volume turned up, I recommend you turn it down for this bit because basically we're looking for something that makes you go, ugh. So let's press play again and we'll have a look. Hall ...with its bowed walls and weathered timbers. It seemed quieter here somehow, more peaceful. The eerie strains of choir song occasionally drifting from the next door Leicester Cathedral added to the out of time ambience. The Cathedral Church of St. Martin has become rather famous of late for housing the tomb of Richard III. The king was reinterred well, in the cathedral in March 2015 after his remains were discovered underneath a Leicester car park in 2012. And there are now reports that his phantom might have followed him to his final resting place with a recent. Okay, so you can see there that we swept, we found the frequency, which was, where are we, 376 hertz. And it was very, there was just a, a horrible noise that was sort of, yuck. so we've, we've cut that. You can see we haven't cut it out completely. We've just put a little notch in. And that's made the vocal a little bit smoother. There's possibly one or two more of those. So we're just going to do the same thing with the high mids and the highs. And we'll cut out a couple of notches and see where we are from there. St. Witness claiming to feel his presence and even capture a photograph showing his likeness appearing on the paved floor. I must admit, though, that the newly revamped visitor centre experience of the cathedral somewhat detracts from the atmosphere I recall from my visits prior to the tomb installation. But this possibly just speaks more to my peculiar liking for dusty, somewhat deserted places. Personally, I like to amble rather aimlessly through historic buildings, losing myself in the history of the place and feeling the stories that must echo from the walls if only we could hear them. Consequently, I was pleased and grateful not to be herded into a tour group at the entrance to the Guildhall, 
or to have to skulk around under the watchful glare of guides posted in every corner of every room, as I have found in some places. But here I was free to wander and soak up the atmosphere. There was historical information on display, but I didn't find it obtrusive and could easily block it out in my mind's eye. Sadly, though. Okay, so we've just done some minor key changes. Uh, the biggest change we made, obviously, was to, to cut off a lot of the low end. We've made three minor notches uh, in the low mids, high mids and highs. And that's just cleaned it up. Not done anything drastic. Yeah, that's not what we're after. You can use EQ to make effects, but that's not what we're going for. So what we want to do now is to go back to our cheat. Uh, we said we were going to use an alternative to compression and the alternative that we're going to use is called Vocal Rider. Basically what this does is it rides the fader much the way as compression does to reduce the louder parts and to bring up the quieter parts to make a similar volume across the track. Not perfect. I'm going to change it to the fast setting. It's going to have a quick play. The resident ghosts weren't included on the information boards, so I was glad to have done my research in advance. The first thing you come across in the guild hall is the internal courtyard, and even this space has its own ghosts. The apparition of a large black dog has been spotted in the courtyard, as well as that of a black cat, which is also sometimes Now, we've got it just about where we want it. We were keeping the audio loud without clipping. And the main reason that I use this plugin is because it doesn't color the sound. Uh, compressors do tend to color the audio. So it's just to keep it simple, it's a very easy to use plugin. And uh, I think we're pretty much done. Uh, once we're happy with all the plugins here, we're ready to mix down. And this basically just takes all these things that are happening in real time and burns them onto the track. So rather than having all these different plugins running all at the same time, it's just one audio file. Then, I normally take a break at this point to rest my ears before we go and master the track. So what I'll do is I'm just going to go to the end of the track going to save this, export the audio, Okay, that's mixing down, and we'll come back when it's done for the mastering. And welcome back. It is now time to do the mastering. Now, I'm sure that in some circles, what I'm about to describe wouldn't be classed as mastering. And that is a long and unimportant discussion for another time. Suffice to say that at this point we would normally have an episode of multiple tracks mixed much as we've seen with our example, but ensuring all the tracks are the same level as much as possible for dialogue, with the background music in place, and at a level low enough not to intrude on the dialogue, but high enough to be noticed and with the intro and outro added. We shouldn't be making any major changes at this point, what we want to do is glue the disparate tracks together and polish them to add some shine. Obviously we've still only got one track in this so that's going to be a little less complicated than it otherwise would be. And for this process we're going to be using a program again from Isotope called Ozone. Whilst it doesn't replace a studio full of actual hardware it is certainly sufficient for a bedroom style setup such as ours. 
we'll start with a preset and uh, we'll do a little fine tuning from there. So I have a very basic mastering preset and this is the uh, monitoring for that because we're aiming for a certain volume level. Oh wait. Move it to the other screen and bring it back when necessary. Okay. So let's have a play with everything bypassed. I'm Lil from Knock Once for Yes, and this is a paranormal postcard from Leicester. I love to start an adventure with a train journey, and luckily for me, Leicester. What I'm going to do next is play it with the plugins here on and then bypassed. You can see when I've bypassed them because it'll come up here, bypassed, and I'll be pressing this button. And we'll just check and see whether it sounds any better with the preset we've got and whether we need to do any fine tuning from there. There is only a few stops away on my local main line, so I was able to enjoy comfortable, fairly stress free travel. Quite aside from my rather romantic affections for railway journeys, however, I had a good reason to begin my trip at Leicester Station, as it reputedly has a ghost of its own. A phantom postman nicknamed Henry has been sighted here. No one seems to know why he favours the rail. Okay, so so far I'm listening and we've got a bit bypassed. I'm feeling it's a little bit rumbly. And with our plugins as it's set, it's a little bit lispy. So we'll perhaps have a look at changing the EQ here so it's taking a bit more off the bottom end. And we'll have another listen. Line as his haunting ground. But he seems to be a good natured spirit, more often sensed than witnessed. The heart of Leicester is only a short walk from the station. Once across the busy road, I soon came to the New Walk, a pedestrian avenue running straight into the city centre. Flanked with historic buildings behind sentinel bare winter trees and with a freezing fog still hanging in the morning air. Okay, so definitely sounding better. Look here, we're aiming for minus 16 luffs and we're coming in a little bit low at the moment but we are peaking quite loud that's not the actual peak it was peaking just over minus 15 so we perhaps need to look at our compressor settings to see if we can get a bit more compression in there as well Made a few changes there. Let's have a listen. Yeah, it was a suitably atmospheric start to the day. Navigating the bustling town. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, what we'll do now is we will simply export the file and it's ready to go. I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, do come back and visit for more.